During the long Wisconsin winter, locals here in Madison dream of days like this. The Madison Radicals have quickly become established as one of the marquee franchises in the AUDL with a 9-2 and record. The Radicals have risen to the top of the Midwest Division. And on this picture-perfect day, ESPN visits Breeze Stevens Field. The Minnesota Windchill hoping to cool off the Madison Radicals and spring the upset. It's week 10 here in the American Ultimate Disc League, and the action begins right now. It's a brilliant summer night here in Madison, Wisconsin. Welcome to Bree Stevens Field. The AUDL comes your way on ESPN3. Good evening, everybody. Evan Lepler alongside Chuck Kindred. Delighted to have you with us. Chuck, Madison has established themselves as the best team in the, in the Midwest Division. Why? What makes this team so good? They play well together. They've got great chemistry. They've got some guys who can really put the ball. And honestly, their zone has just been trouble for most of the other teams in the division. But the one team that really hasn't had as much trouble with his own is this Minnesota team who knocked off the Radicals on ESPN3 earlier this year. Yeah, you know, and they tap, they attacked over the top quite a bit. They threw more hammers than any team I've ever seen, and they really exploited that backside weakness of the zone. These two teams have met twice now. Minnesota won the first one in Minneapolis. The Radicals won the second here in Wisconsin. As we look forward to the third matchup of the year, what's on your mind? What are the keys for each squad? Well, you know, Minnesota had the same kind of firepower last year. They didn't travel as well last year. And this year they're bringing all their horses down here to Madison, and they're looking to pull the big upset. I mean, maybe it's not an upset because they won the last game, but certainly Madison's sort of the front runner. They're the, the champs from last year in the Midwest, and Madison expects to win. Well, here we go. The Radicals, the home team in the blue with the white numerals, and the wind chill, the visitors from Minneapolis-St. Paul in the white jerseys defending. One of the themes we'll talk about tonight is the depth of the Radicals. Their head coach, Tim DeBile, has so much confidence in his roster, really from 1 through 25. Yeah, as he should. These guys are very seasoned, experienced players. A lot of them come through the Wisconsin Hodag program. But in any event, this Madison Club crew and the Madison Ultimate community are a very tight-knit community. The big six foot seven lefty, Scott Riggles, somebody that... Minnesota head coach Lou Abramowski was very concerned about coming into this game. He said that no 6'7 guy runs quite as fast as Riggles does. Nearly a travel there, but play on. Back into the hands of Tom Annan. Now in the middle of the field, sent right on the doorstep, Riggles. And Madison with smooth offense on the opening point. Yeah, they really exploited the break side. A lot of those inside out, kind of backhand, low, tight throwing lanes that they... They make a living on Annan in particular, and also Andrew Brown are able to really step out and dial in those tight breaks. So the Madison offense strikes in just about one minute of action. Here you see one of those inside backhands from Tom Annan, and then a continue around. It's always important to throw before the, the mark gets set, and that's what Shrywise does there, sets up the continuation goal here. And it was Riggles to Shrywise in the end zone for the Radicals. You take a look at the roster. Now we'll see the Radicals defense. And Andrew Meshnick, number two, he is the key guy in this two-man cup that really has created havoc all season long. Yeah, he's been a lot of trouble for his opponents. Big mark, very active, great anticipation. He's also good defending downfield. Not his own defense on the first point. Madison comes out and man... The deep shot looking for Josh Hemish, and it's defended almost by Brian Hart, and he does come up with a D. The two number 13s going head to head, Hart and Hemish, and Madison will look for a break on the opening defensive point. Also key in the Madison defense, Peter Graffy, who leads the league in Ds, as you see Brian Hart reading that disc well. Got just enough of the disc to send it away from the chasing Hemish. Madison counters with a deep shot, 50-50 disc, and Graffy rises above. Soaring over James Ferran, 
the big man for the wind chill. Dumps it back to Hart, the former Hodag captain. Fakes a lefty backhand and dumps it off to his safety valve. This is Adam Drews. Back to Kelson Alexander, and now Drews and Alexander play catch. Madison is 9-2. It's Minnesota team, 5-5, five and five, but winners of three in a row, and the windshield coming off a great win last week over the Cincinnati Revolution. Madison has sent an opening punch with two straight scores. Yeah, the Radicals look real comfortable tonight in front of their home crowd. They're, they're used to this win, the swirling breeze Stevens win, and they're just executing right now. They look very confident. Well, there's a similar wind tunnel to Chicago with the arrangement of this stadium. May not be might not be as swirly as Chicago, but definitely not just a simple upwind, downwind effect. No, it's not. You saw them running running their drills before the game out in the middle of the field, and it was it was almost comical. Every throw would pop right in the middle. It would jump up five feet all of a sudden, and it was... It was strangely consistent how often that happens. So you watch guys really keeping their eye on the ball, really trying to clap catch instead of clock catch, because you just don't know out here. 74 degrees here in Madison. A swirling wind that will impact the disc in numerous ways. Zone defense here. Meshnik on the mark, number two. Dresser, the high flick, all the way back. Nice job to get it around by Minnesota. When they get that dump backwards, it's important that they turn the corner and get it all the way around to the other side. That's exactly what they did, and it really exposes the backside of this defense. Minnesota looking deep. Ben Yacht in the end zone. So the wind chill on the board. This Minnesota team, coached by Lou Abramovsky, he really changed the mentality of this team this year. You mentioned how last year they were a pretty good home team. A lot of talent in the Minneapolis area. Obviously, Sub-Zero, sub a longtime fixture in the men's open scene in the USAU. Dragon Thrust, the mixed division champion this past year. And, and putting that together and drawing from some Luther College guys and from CLX guys, that's how Minnesota's become a competitive team in this division. Yeah, it's really an incredible town. They've got a big juniors program. They've got the best masters program in the country. Surly has just been dominating the masters scene lately. And like you said, they're on top in the co-ed division. They've got a strong men's team. This, this is a huge pool of talent. Jay Drescher with the pull. He's tied for third in the AUDL and D's with a guy you may have heard of named Bo Kittrich. Yeah, I've heard of that guy. One of the stars of the San Jose Spiders out west. We've seen a lot of the West Division in recent weeks, but here tonight, the Midwest in the showcase. Madison takes a deep shot looking for Schweiwise, and he mistimed his jump, and it's a turnover. Looks like a push in the back from Wiseman there after the play. In any event... Shrywise misread it, got over the top there. They really trust Shrywise in the air, though. I mean, he was barely open, and I think that was Thibodeau who just aired it out up high and just said, go get it, young man. Well, Madison, a team more than most that doesn't necessarily live on the deep shots. They love to play the underneath, grind it out game. Yeah, it's true. They're really, they got those I.O. shots. Here's a deep shot from Minnesota. And it's out of the reach of Drescher. Wow, I thought he played that just right, but there we saw it. The wind kicks in all of a sudden. You almost have no idea it's coming, and then the disc speeds up, and it turns over, and it's out of reach. Two handlers and basically a horizontal stack for the Radicals. Tough shot. It was there, but it was dropped by Madison's Nate Thibodeau. Great delivery there by Shrywise on that low flick. Not a high percentage throw. He put it right on the money, though. He did. This is Eric Johnson, certainly one of the key guys when you talk about Minnesota. A star at Luther College. 
made one of the great plays of the AUDL season in the first meeting between these two teams. That disc popped up just a little bit at the last moment. It looked like a drop, but really that was the win. Yeah, there you saw it. He's right in line. He's watching the disc, and right before he catches it, it pops on him. When you're coaching your college team, would you advise on a windy day the pancake or the claw catch? Which is more reliable? Well, I played at Northwestern in the Great Lakes region. We never had any good weather, and we really worked on clap catching, especially in zone. Always clap catch unless you got pressure. And it's funny, I moved out west as well, and out west, everybody clock catches all the time. Another great inside shot from Shrywise. This one works. Low release from Shrywise to Dave Weissman. A picturesque put for the Radicals, and it's 3-1. That's pretty incredible. He lunges out like he's, he's going to burst like a sprinter to the right, and then he just kind of cuts it across the body. Looks a little bit like Andrew Brown's flick. Let's take a look at him set this up here. Well, this is the drop by Schoenrock there. But watch how Shrywey sets it up. Real unique delivery on this forehand. You'll see him get open. Here he catches the disc, number four. Watch him move out, stretch out to the left, and he kind of throws across his body. Very effective, very quick, and he gets very low. Almost like a natural air bounce to that flick. Yeah, real soft. Nearing the midway point of this first quarter. 48 minutes in the AUDL. A five minute overtime if we get there. If it's still tied after one OT, it becomes sudden death. Something we saw in Chicago with the Alley Cats and the Wildfire earlier this season. In the middle of the field, Pete Carr gets it off to Pat Jensen. Meshnick on the mark was bothering James Hron. Now the deep shot up line, chiseled to the end zone for Hron, and the wind chill convert offensively. Yeah, nice job by Minnesota to just kind of steady the ship, execute, hit the open man, don't force anything. We saw, you know, an upline cut with not a lot of space that was looked off, and really that's what you got to do here. See, here's that upline cut that's well defended. Sometimes a nervous player will throw that, but as you can see, the cut continues for a goal. James Ron up line, obviously the wider field, tougher to defend. A lot of different rules in the AUDL compared to USAU. Of course, it is still ultimate. But our Twitter question tonight, what rule change would you make to improve the, the AUDL? We want to know what you think. You can reply at Evan Lepler, at Chucktown now with a hashtag AUDL rules. Started talking a little bit about this last week. The conversation has already begun. Madison takes a deep shot, 50-50 disc, and it falls incomplete. It was intended for Thomas Coolidge. Thomas Coolidge, one of my favorite players to watch out here. Such a hustler, always making athletic plays. Misread that one. And actually, it's funny, Andrew Brown's such a great thrower but not really known for his hucks. A lot of times he'll just hold that disc and break the mark. Minnesota loves to huck, and this one falls short. Absolutely. Talking to Tim DeBile, the head coach, he says that Andrew Brown is probably the best non-huck thrower he's ever seen. It's incredible, right, because he does attack the defense. And normally when you think about that, you think about a guy ripping it deep. But Minnesota Andrew has not had the deep shot game working so far. That one didn't have a shot from Peterson. No, it didn't. They're, they're really having a hard time handling the wind. And, you know, rightly so. It's very inconsistent. This is Tom Annan. Over to Shrywise, who's been important early. And upfield for Thibodeau. At times this season, Madison's offense has looked as smooth as anybody. They don't strike with a lightning quickness of some other teams, a Toronto, a San Jose, a San Fran, but there may not be a more consistent offense in the league. Yeah, you always feel confident if you're Madison when, when you got Andrew Brown resetting to Tom Hannon. I mean, how can you not feel confident? Into the hands of Shrywise again. Dan Miller on the mark. That's a tough throw, but Andrew Brown is there. He takes another deep shot. Will this one have the float? No, it won't. 
That huck turned over as well. We've seen a few hucks in both directions that have turned over. That one starts as a flick kind of inside out, and it just turns to the left at the last minute. And guys are having a hard time controlling the flight path of the disc. First quarter is moving here. Minnesota, after getting broken early, trying to tie it up on another turn. Riggles intercepts the overthrow. Yeah, nice cut downfield from Mark Pazanski. The throw is a little too high. Deep shot from Tom Annan looking for Coolidge. And that one's right on the money for Madison. After a point where throws were consistently off the mark, Tom Annan dropped it on the dime. He sure did. Watch him just kind of lean back here and carve this one out to space. Alex Baker on the mark. He's such a talented, intuitive thrower. You see, he kind of leans back. He feels that wind kicking. So he goes a little bit lower than normal. And so much touch on that throw. Beautiful. I heard this week that a few of these Madison Radicals players have decided to play for Chicago Machine during the club season. I think it's Dave Wiseman, Tom Annan, and missing one more here. Trywise. So that's a big that's a big change. Those are some talented guys from Madison that have decided to go down to Chicago to compete during the club season. It hurts Madison. It certainly helps Machine. It sure does. Here's that double team, Meshnik and Weber. Two gigantic marks who respond well. Baker goes right over the top with the scuba, though. Well, Tim DeVile has sort of been the mastermind of this 2-4-1 zone defense, trying to funnel everything. If they're going to shoot it deep to Peter Graffy, it's allowed Graffy to lead the league in Ds, but it's also made things really tough. You know, a team like Minnesota at times shredded the zone defense in the first meeting because it was a, a windless night, but on a windy day, you basically rely on these really short throws, also the cross-field hammers that are always risky. It's true, and it really is a different game because they could just throw these. They were really throwing a lot of blades just because they could really control the disc. They weren't giving the defense a chance to respond. And this kind of win, these, these softer over-the-tops are a little easier. We've seen a lot of scoopers. Austin Lean reverses back to the center handler. Danny Meeson found a pocket in the defense ahead to Hemish on the doorstep and in. So it wasn't a lightning quick score, but a pretty efficient offensive point for the windshield. Yeah, it was. They, they had a couple tight moments against the double team near the sideline where they had to throw some scubers, even some offhand scubers over the top, but they did it. And as long as they keep that disc moving, Seems like when they reverse the field, if they keep the flow moving upfield and just take what's what's available to them, it doesn't take long for them to move it all the way downfield. See Lean here facing the mark. And EJ with a nice cross field throw, which sets up the little throw and go here. How would you describe the basics of Madison's 2-4-1 zone defense? Well, they're, they're smart about slapping that two-man trap on however you want to call it the, the double team they put it on but they're really it's really a contain double team until they get to the sideline um, the one thing they're kind of giving up is the backside so if you reverse the field if you throw a 40 yard cross field hammer you will be successful but they're counting on you not being able to do that so they've got two guys right on the disc four guys right behind that and they're exposed on the back and that's kind of what you're trying to do they say a two-man cup but it almost at times is like a six-person cup with the two markers right on the disc with your being allowed to double team that just popped up, saved by Madison. Thomas Coolidge, right place, right time, endured the contact. Coolidge was streaking deep. Schleicher couldn't hit him. Now the reset. Schleicher's open deep here. Wow, Andrew Brown. Annan look into the end zone, just out of the reach of his intended target. You know, typically you don't encourage throws with that little air bounce, those risers. But it seems like Madison is playing with their home field advantage. They know the wind tunnels here at Bree Stevens Field. You might be right. I've never really understood how Andrew Brown does what he does, but he sure puts a lot of soft touch on that backhand, kind of bounces it off the wind. 
When the rest of us do that, it looks low percentage. But when he does it, it looks great. Nice read there by Yacht. Yacht looking deep. And what a catch for Minnesota's Brandon Mattis. Minnesota looking for the equalizer. And with the stall count rising, Mattis just does get it off. A big swing over to Shirley to the end zone to tie it up at four. On one end, the Radicals, a fingertip catch away from a two-score lead. Yacht sends the huck. Mattis makes the big sky. And now we're even with just 18 seconds left in the first. Yeah, look at his great catch. Defenders coming hard. But great concentration there. Makes the catch. Brandon Mattis keeps possession of the disc. And then you can see here again, as soon as they reverse the, re reverse the field, rather, Show and Rock open to the backside. Lou Abramowski, you see the coach of Minnesota just running off the field. You know, he, he took over this year after Minnesota was not quite as organized last year. And Lou, obviously a long club player, started playing uh, ultimate in college. A friend of his in Spanish class basically told him he should start playing, and he did. And he's played for a zillion different club teams. He's basically the closest thing ultimate has to a nomad in the sport, going from one place to another. This pull uh, is not exactly perfect. But one of the interesting things he told me about coaching here compared to coaching high school ultimate, which he does for Hopkins High in Minnesota, coaching, captaining other club teams, is you really have to do your coaching before the game. Because with how quickly the points roll into the next, you basically have about five seconds to get everything you want to get across. You don't even have a lot of time in between quarters and at half. Yeah, that is really true. Big shot deep from Kevin Pettit Scantling here. Looking Plenty of people in the space. Kelston Alexander, the primary target. Everybody there now, and Madison cleans up the trash. There you see the wind playing tricks on everybody down there. EJ went up early and high, and the wind just held it just out of reach for another couple seconds. And Adam Drews, by not attacking it in the air at all, was waiting <laughs> for it when it finally came down to earth. Not exactly a high percentage throw right here, but the Radicals will take it. You see Drews hustling behind the play. Look at number eight, waiting. There it is. And we had an official measurement of his vertical there. It was one half of one inch. It's all and about that, reading. And that was with less than a second to go in the half. So Madison will pull here up by one. Minnesota might be able to rip it deep. So some discussion about this, the time right now. It looks like it should be about a second. The stadium scoreboard says seven tenths. Officials today, John Thibodeau, Jeff Maxted, Becky Ladone, Todd Eisenberg, and Dan Rubenstein running the clock. So this has got to go straight to the end zone. Big shot's going to turn over and be a little short, I think. And it's a turnover, and that's how the first quarter comes to an end. Well, the pace picked up. Madison broke early. Minnesota got one back, and we're basically on serve after 12 minutes here in Wisconsin. Desperation deep shot thrown by Jay Drescher. These are why you got to take the stats with a grain of salt. That's a turnover, although it's not necessarily a detrimental play for the wind chill. One down, three to go. 5-4, Madison. Yeah, it's a Zipcar. I don't own it, I just use it when I need it. But Zipcar has thousands of cars parked all over the city, even two on my block. You can use one for an hour or for a day. And Zipcar pays for gas and insurance. It's easy. Go to Zipcar.com to get your Zipcar, the key to vehicles parked in your neighborhood and across the globe. For work or play, find a Zipcar near you, book it. And before you know it, you're on the road. Cars by the hour or day, gas and insurance included. Join for as little as $6 per month at Zipcar.com. I missed my graduation. To practice. Asleep so we could drill. I missed anniversary of Father's Day. Mother's Day. Valentine's Day. I missed my I missed my family. I missed my family. I missed my family. I missed my family. I missed my
The city of Madison purchased the land that Breeze Stevens Field was built on in 1923. Capacity of about 4,000. This is the only grass surface in the league. And even that won't be true very much longer because they're replacing the grass with AstroTurf, artificial turf, in August. But it's a beautiful night for the AUDL showcase game on ESPN3. The Radicals lead 5-4. Alongside Chuck Kindred, I'm Evan Leffler. Let's jump into the first quarter highlights. Things opened up after it was fairly conservative at the beginning. Some of the deep shots began to connect. Yeah, there you see a great catch-up high by Graffy. I thought Haran got first touch there, number 17, but Graffy stays with it and rips it down. Big layout by Thibodeau and an inside shot from Shrywise did not work. We saw Shrywise and Andrew Brown and Tom Mannon all looking for those low inside breaks. Here we can see a give and go for the goal here. That's number seven, Danny Meeson working the disc to the end zone. And nice adjustment here from Coolidge, Thomas Coolidge, how, very heads up receiver. How important was it for Minnesota to get that break back? It's huge. They're they're on the road, and you know they don't have the crowd behind them. This is a very confident Madison team that's used to winning here. That's you know won the division last year, and you do not want to fall behind against this team. That was the play of the quarter from Brandon Mattis. A great play up high. The young 22-year-old out of Winona State. Here's Drews picking up the garbage. And the final point of the half for Adam Drews and Madison. That's the difference. The Radicals will pull to begin the second quarter. 12 minutes on the clock. You see Lou Abramowski. Now he said he's been he's been disappointed in a couple of things with his team. They've had some bad luck, but they're learning from their mistakes. He's learning from his mistakes as a coach. And, you know, he really got the job when this roster wasn't totally set. It's fascinating to talk to different people around the league and figure out how they built their teams. Because some teams were very player built. You know, in San Jose, it was Ashland Joy and Bo Kittredge. And in, in San Francisco, it was Cassidy Rasmussen and Sam Canner and Yokawa Oka. They sort of brought in their coach. For Minnesota, it was Lou Abramowski bringing in the Sub-Zero guys and some of the CLX guys. And then the last guy he got to commit was Eric Johnson from Luther. And obviously, they were excited when they, he was like a, a college basketball coach pumping his fist in his office when they finally got that person to commit. Because he's a difference maker. He sure is. He had, like you said, one of the plays of the season so far. In the last game, huge diving catch over the defender. Stands up, throws a hammer to the end zone. And he's, you know, he was on the next-gen tour. I think it was last year, played at Luther. He's just one of those exciting, entertaining, athletic, up-and-coming young talents in the sport. Here's the rest of the Minnesota active roster. James Ron, certainly one of their key difference makers. 36 goals so far this season, which is fifth most in the league, trailing only Indianapolis' is Cameron Brock, Washington, D.C.'s Tyler DiGirolamo, Vancouver's Derek Fenton, and Chicago's A.J. Nelson. And if you're on a list with those four guys, you're doing something right. Yeah, you said it. I, uh, I came out and asked a couple guys on the windshield roster. I said, EJ's your best player, right? Said it just like that. And almost every one of them said, not really, I would go with Haran. So they have a lot of respect for this guy. And you can, I mean, the stats bear it out. This guy is in the end zone a lot. He's just a solid defender, a solid cutter, good with the disc, great size. Look for him to have a big game as usual. You see him working in the lane downfield and about to get the disc. Well, he's almost as wide as he is tall. He's got the throws, a nice upline shot to Meeson. High release backhand, Hemish could not come down with it. It's a turnover. Madison in transition. This is Peter Graffy, one of the guys that Tim DeBiles had to rein in a little bit. He wants to just shoot it deep every time he gets it. Nice job playing within the system there. Resets to Drews and now Mike Swain. On the sideline, Alexander. Overshoots one target, but Swain cleans it up. Here's one of the best lockdown man-to-man -man defenders in the league who started playing ultimate as a senior at Madison Memorial High School, and now he's playing on the pro team in his hometown, and he gives the Radicals a two-point lead. Yeah, here's that high backhand that just gets away from his receiver, and you can see the throw, I believe, was either to Pettit Scantling or to Swain. Scantling tries to play it there. Swain all too happy to collect the scraps. 
Mike Swain, 28-year-old, played collegiately at Wisconsin Whitewater. Right after high school, he joined the military, was stationed in Fairbanks, Alaska, the hometown of one Bo Kittredge. And uh, in Alaska, he played in summer leagues and hat tournaments and really helped hone his skills before he started playing competitive club. There's a bunch of good players from Alaska. Yeah, it's very disproportionate. Statistically, you wouldn't expect very many top players to come from Alaska, but that's not the you truth. You ever been to Alaska? No. Cold makes you strong, apparently. Also, Alaska is one of the United States. What year do you think we'll have an AUDL team in Alaska? It should be in 2042, I think, <laughs> if things go well. It's, it's on pace. We should unroll a franchise in 2042. Not exactly cost efficient, but it would be a fun place to travel for a weekend yeah, or a that's, month. That's a big trip. This is Johnson in the middle of the field to Hemish. Back to EJ. EJ looks a little like Josh Zipperstein, like a young Josh Yip Zipperstein. Very athletic. Callahan Award winner for Brown in 2005. Zip. Now EJ gets the assist to Josh Hemish, one of the key receivers on the Dragon Thrust championship team from last October in Frisco. Here's what I've noticed, and you can tell me if I'm mistaken. Minnesota, when it's played its typical game of just shooting it deep, has been somewhat reckless. But when they've kept it chilly, they've carved up this Madison defense. Yeah, there's a lot of space. I mean, you know, Madison's not playing lockdown defense. I think you're I think you're absolutely right that they don't really need to shoot it deep. If you have to resort to a huck, if the stall's getting high and you got somebody going deep, sure, let it let it rip. But we haven't seen that kind of pressure yet from Madison. I think they're capable of it, but plenty of lanes to throw to. Well, Minnesota currently in fourth place in the Midwest Division. Only the top three make it into the playoffs. So Minnesota needs to win and it needs some help. The good news for the Windchill is after today, the rest of their games are at home. One of them against Chicago. They also have a game against Indianapolis that was suspended a couple of weeks ago. Minnesota led 11-7. The word I've received is that they are gonna have to play that game and they're probably gonna have to restart it from the very beginning which is bad news because Minnesota was up by four. Deep shot for Riggles. He's wide open, and he reads it perfectly. Yeah, Wiseman put, some, put an interesting shape on that disc. Lots of outside in, kind of that roll curve, dropping in at a weird angle. Yacht really didn't get a good beat on it, and Riggles read it all the way. Would have been interesting to see Riggles going up against Yacht because those two guys can get up. Here we see Wiseman coming underneath number 21. Looks at the forehand, settles for this backhand. And watch how much this turns over. It comes in almost blading to the right. And Riggles read it perfectly. Unlike the Minnesota defender who watched Riggles catch it for the score. This Madison team practices about two and a half hours once a week. And they really focus more on defense than they do on offense. Tim DeBile told me that, you know, I don't want to have practice for guys to work on their throws. You don't need 25 guys to get together to do that. We're focusing on team concept strategy, perfecting this zone. Man-to-man -man defense here. Big hammer. Deed up by Andrew Meshnick. And the quick counter over the head of Adam Drews. How good is Andrew Meshnick? It seems like anytime there's a question, he answers it with a big D, a big point block. It's just a, just one of those sleeper guys that's going to be obviously going to be a star. Already is one, really. Only 24 years old. He went to U University of Wisconsin Stevens Point for four years, then played his fifth year with the Hodags in Madison. Quick turnover, the kind of giveaway that you hate to see right on the goal line. Yeah, the wind chill are still trying to play the wind. Still trying to throw over the top and, and have it drop in, and you just can't count on this wind here in Bree Stevens. Again, Drews bluffs a lefty backhand and then releases one for the dump. Alexander almost lost that pivot foot. Now the inside-out flick and a swing from Everhart. The Radicals.
stretch the lead to three for the first time. That's a break. Eight thirty-three to go here in the second quarter, and the Radicals have their largest lead. Here's the turnover on the goal line, and then just basic offense from Madison. Swain in the end zone, his second score. Yeah, Madison's starting to pull away here. If you're Minnesota, you need to start getting in the end zone. They've come out pretty flat here in the second quarter. Peter Graffy with the pull. He's averaged 5.6 seconds of hang time on average per pull this season. It seems like a lot. Although, what is what is Mark Lloyd at on average? Isn't he up over six? He was around six and a half. Primary puller, Jay Drescher for Minnesota, averaging 6.7 seconds of hang time wow. per pull. Deep shot goes up. Feldman let it fly. There was contact in the end zone. Yacht stares at the ref, and there's no call. Yeah, Graffy grabbed him. Surprised they didn't blow the whistle on that one. Just like a home plate umpire with balls and strikes, you just hope the refs will be consistent. If they let that go at one end, you hope they'll let it go at the other end. It's true, and you know, Usually ultimate, you know, before pro ultimate has been self-officiated. And I've talked to a lot of elite club guys. They really don't care how physical it is as long as you're consistent. Madison takes a timeout called by Tim DeBile on the sidelines. And we'll take it to the Radicals leading by three with the disc. 7.54 to go here in the first half in Wisconsin. I missed my graduation. Asleep so we could drill. I missed anniversary of Father's Day. Welcome back to Breeze Stevens Field, everybody. And out of the timeout, the Radicals will have the disc. Tim DeBile, one of the top executives with the AUDL, a big reason why we're broadcasting on ESPN3 right now. So thanks, Tim. It's an honor to be here as always. And here's a guy who really didn't start playing ultimate until he was 28, 29 years old when a guy at work asked him to be on his summer league team. And from there, he really enjoyed it. Been a basketball player for a long time. Started playing mixed and went to nationals with a master's team. Now he owns a professional ultimate team, and he coaches the first place team in the Midwest Division. Yeah, very neat, very interesting guy. It's like the American dream, isn't it? I think so. I think that's how it goes. Deep shot looking for Riggles Here off the timeout. Yacht. Riggles is just too big. The lefty launches the backhand, and it's deed up by the poaching windchill defender, David Shirley. Great job by Yacht to take away Riggle's favorite break, which is that around flick. Receiving travel, but it wasn't a reception, or was it? I think he might have advanced the disc too far. Not sure. Puts it in, in the end zone. Wow, just an errant throw there. Too low, too far out to the too far out to the left of the defender. Costly turbo for the Minnesota. You can't be can't be coughing the disc up like that. Andrew Brown will pick up the disc. Nine times he's been at Nationals, three times he's played at Worlds. One of the most experienced handlers in the AUDL. Wow, didn't even look. A lot of float on this one, but Madison's got it. In the end zone for the Radicals, Dave Weissman, and it's a four-score lead for the home team. Interesting choice there from Coolidge. Looked like he was going to just look off Wiseman going up line. Ends up throwing it kind of high, which is probably a good idea. Look at how big Wiseman is going up line. Huge shoulders, great length, long arms. 
and watch him just keep position, get up, keep the disc right overhead. Well done. In your mind, what's the key to defending the throw and go? Well, the throw and go, you can't be flat-footed on the mark. That's the biggest problem is if you're marking and your, your weight's back in your heels, then you cannot respond. As soon as the throw goes up, you're, you're toast. So that's part of the reason that when you're teaching guys to mark, you tell them to keep the weight forward on the balls of the feet. Chop your feet. Don't settle down. Because it's not just about the mark. It's about what happens as soon as they throw. You're flat-footed for an instant, and you're probably going to get burned. And that's a great layout, D. Tremendous handler defense from Kelson Alexander. The Radicals on a remarkable run, and Swain, was he in? He thinks so. No signal yet. Stall count should be rising. Swain gets it in and out of the hands of his target, Kevin Pettit-Scantling. Well, a great opportunity for Madison to just add to the lead. It would have been a 3-0 run. Scuber over the top. Graffy comes in, but he can't get it. The catch made by Pete Carr, and he was fouled from behind. I think that's the right call. I like Graffy's aggressive plays, but he is fouling. He is bringing his body onto people. And you got to call that, otherwise things get out of hand. Big bid from KPS there. Haran steps over him. That's a fun matchup. That one too far ahead looking for Johnson. He's made some sensational grabs, but that one impossible. The sun setting here in Madison. Just a picture perfect day in the mid 70s. Madison likes there being a little breeze, but thankfully there's not much wind chill, at least so far in this game. Nice downfield defense right now from Minnesota. The only thing they're giving up are these breakside cuts. Wind has decreased by a few miles an hour since the game started, we're told. There's Bill Everhart. And that one just kept floating into the, into the grass over the head of Drews. Great job by Patrick Jensen to force the issue on D. Made the receiver go up early. That's as good as a D. Middle of the field for Carr. Austin Lee in the slippery hander looking up line. Intercepted by his teammate Dan Hunt. Otherwise, defensively, Kelson Alexander would have made the play. Nice mark, and Hunt has to throw to the end zone. I think it might have been a stall. It would have been a turn even if it wasn't a stall. Throwing into traffic. The Radicals take over as we tick under four minutes to go. Reminder, stall count seven in the AUDL compared to ten in the scope of USA Ultimate. Yeah, it's seven seconds and it's called by the ref and it's silent. So you never really know when you're a half second away. Big, airy shot to Mike Swain. Hemish there defensively. Swain comes up with it. Used his body to box out Hemish. Flicks for the end zone, and the Radicals lead by five. That's a big play from Mike Swain. You see him set this up. Swain's a great leaper, but you can see he just maintains position, keeps his shoulders in front of the defender's shoulders. And really, if you do that, it's not a lot the defender can do. It's not a foul. Swain patiently didn't have the backhand. He found the flick. 10-5, Madison. Lou Abramowski, the coach of the Winchell, has seen enough, and he has called a timeout. The Winchell talking it over, trailing by five, 320 to go, first half. Yeah, it's a zip car. I don't own it, I just use it when I need it. But Zipcar has thousands of cars parked all over the city, even two on my block. You can use one for an hour or for a day. And Zipcar pays for gas and insurance. It's easy. 
Go to zipcar.com to get your zip card, the key to vehicles parked in your neighborhood and across the globe. For work or play, find a zip car near you, book it, and before you know it, you're on the road. Cars by the hour or day, gas and insurance included. Join for as little as $6 per month at zipcar.com. Good look at the referees for today's game. Thibodeau, Maxted, Ladone, Eisenberg, and Dan Rubenstein, the only one not in the picture there. It's a nice night to come out to the field and watch them ultimate, whether you're wearing a zebra shirt, a uniform, dressed comfortably, or even dressed up a little bit like you and me. Alongside perennial Nationals competitor Chuck Kindred and currently the, one of the coaches of Northwestern Ultimate, Evan Leppler with you. What rule change would improve the AUDL in your opinion? Reply on Twitter. Let us know what you think. At Evan Leppler, at Chucktown now with the hashtag AUDL rules. We've gotten some interesting feedback. We had a conversation with someone on Twitter earlier this week about the possibility of after a timeout call in the middle of a point, forcing the offense to inbound the disc from the sideline instead of putting it back into play from where it was in the field. What do you think about that suggestion? I love that rule, and the reason that the guy on Twitter brought it up is because it gives the offense an advantage. I think it's a fun way to do it. I think it should be an overhead inbound as well, kind of like soccer. Shake it up, make them throw upside down, do something silly. I would love to see sideline plays where the thrower had to throw over the top. Someone on Twitter tonight says that perhaps – timeout should only be called by players and not from the sideline it does get confusing sometimes and how many times have we seen the coach call a timeout the team throws for the score and then that's nullified by the whistle it's true hammer Peterson over the top over the top drops it in dresher knocking on the door a lot of air under this one madison deed it up once and that was enough the wind chill has been way too casual, Chuck. Yeah, they love throwing cross field, upside down, long shots. And the wind is really betraying them tonight. I think they need to make the adjustment here and stop testing these guys on the big, high throws that really are affected by the wind. Madison's defense has been nearly as efficient as its offense in converting with a disc in its hands. This is Josh Wilson, another Alaska product, but he threw this one away. Hamish picks it up, back for Johnson. The wind chill need to stop the bleeding. It was a 5-4 score at the end of one. 5-1 so far here in quarter number two. And that one was forced up wide. Madison with an easy D. Yeah, great job by Wilson to anticipate that throw, run through, and attack. And the sideline timeout called by Tim DeBile. Perhaps wanted to get his offense onto the field here. He said that his offense is so incredibly efficient when they go on the field after a timeout call. We'll step aside. Final couple minutes of the first half. When we come back, the Radicals with an impressive performance so far in the AUDL. Sleep so we could drill. I missed anniversary and Father's Day, Mother's Day, Valentine's Well, the Radicals will have the offensive line back out in the field here. You know, we've seen some big comebacks in this league, but Madison, the way they play, really tough to come back against them because they basically have like a ball control offense akin to the NFL. Yeah, it's true. They're really hard to break against. I mean, you're going to get a break or two if you're playing good D, but you're not going to get that many, and they just don't come easy. These guys don't turn the disc. They're not flustered with pressure. You can load up in the front, and they'll hit the arounds. They'll hit the over-the-tops. And they're never forcing the issue downfield. They're more than happy to reset and break. Straight stack. 
Perhaps the most basic offense that young ultimate players learn. Straight line down the field quickly devolves into a mishmash. Beating the stall count with the dump. Nice low release backhand to Coolidge. Reset to the middle, Tom Annan. Dump it back for Andrew Brown. And a yardage penalty, he'll walk it off. Drescher defending Brown, that's a great matchup, but so far Madison's got the better of it. Little push off there from Brown. Drescher might have turned his ankle there. I'm surprised there was no call. The crafty vets tend to get away with those calls. There's Andrew Brown, played with Furious George. Vancouver has also played with Sub-Zero and also with the Madison club team. It's funny to watch. Andrew Brown is putting his hands right on Dresser's chest before his cuts. It's subtle, but he is getting a little bit of separation with his hands. Big bid there from Dresser. Not enough, though. Over to Annan. Low bullet flick. Couldn't hit Coolidge. Instead to Riggles in the middle. The 6-7 southpaw surveys. Back to Brown. To the end zone. Madison again. Schleicher to Riggles. The Radicals are rolling today here in Madison. Yeah, great job by Riggles to catch this bullet pass from Schleicher. See, he throws and then cuts up line. I'm surprised he's able to wrangle this throw. It came in hot. Well, this game has followed the script that Madison wanted from the very beginning. Minnesota so far with just five scores in the first 23 and a half minutes. Now, compared to what we saw last week in the Bay Area, this game could not be more different from a pace standpoint. So far we've got 16 goals in nearly 24 minutes. Last week we saw 63 goals in 48 in a 33-30 San Jose triumph over San Francisco. Let's see if Minnesota can get something positive heading into halftime. Peterson cross field swing for ten seconds now. This is Klain over to Miller. Five seconds. Minnesota's running out of time. Puts one up to the end zone. It's incomplete. Was there contact? No call. The Radicals win the second quarter 6-1 to one and lead 11-5 at the half. He gave his target, Pat Jensen, a chance. But with two defenders nearby, that was a tough play and unable to haul it in. So the Radicals looking for their 10th win of the year. They already have the most wins in the league. Toronto in first place in the east. San Jose in first place in the west. Those two teams have gotten a lot of hype. At halftime here in Wisconsin, we'll step aside our halftime report here in the AUDL when we come back. Yeah, it's a Zipcar. I don't own it, I just use it when I need it. But Zipcar has thousands of cars parked all over the city, even two on my block. You can use one for an hour or for a day. And Zipcar pays for gas and insurance. It's easy. Go to Zipcar.com to get your Zipcar, the key to vehicles parked in your neighborhood and across the globe. For work or play, find a Zipcar near you, book it. And before you know it, you're on the road. Cars by the hour or day. Gas and insurance included. Join for as little as $6 per month at Zipcar.com. I missed my graduation. I practiced my sleep so we could drill. I missed anniversary of Father's Day. Mother's Day. Play. 
Welcome back to Madison, Wisconsin. 11-5, the Radicals lead at the break. And we are joined in the booth by a very special guest, 2009 Callahan Award winner in the women's division and member of the world game and a big Madison Radicals fan, Georgia Bosher. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm great as well. I imagine you're doing well because the Radicals are up by six. You're a season ticket holder. What was your first reaction when you heard about the Madison Radicals coming into existence? I was pretty excited to hear that there was going to be a Madison team. I knew they'd do well here. The community is huge and so supportive. I was a little skeptical when the ADL started at first, but after that first year, I had friends on teams and kind of heard a little bit about how the games went and everything. And the first game I went to here, I was sold. You've played ultimate at the highest level in the world. What do you think of the game? And more importantly, what's it like being part of the atmosphere at these games? The game isn't, I mean, it's, that's not really the point, I feel like. It's the atmosphere, definitely. It's so fun here. Everybody's so into it. You go with a huge crowd. You get the hecklers. It's just like being on the sideline of a summer league game, but at another level. Um, I mean, the guys bring it on the field. It's it's it is good ultimate. It's really fun to watch. You know, when 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 you play, it's always good ultimate as well. T tell us a story about how you found the sport and when you started playing. <laughs> uh, I actually started here in Madison. Uh, the community definitely brought me up. Uh, it's a great place to start playing. I started in high school. Um, have played with a ton of the guys on Radicals just through being coached by them or Summer League or anything. So definitely was brought up by this crowd here that you see. Obviously entrenched in the Madison community, but you've gotten to travel all over the world. Tell us some of the places you've been to play Ultimate. Um, I've gotten to go a few places. Uh, Colombia, uh, Japan, Prague, Finland. I don't know. It's Madison is the best place to play, though. I don't know. Well, she's not biased, but there are a lot of great places to play, including the Bay Area, where your brother is uh, an important member of an AUDL team. What's it been like following his season from afar? It's fun. It's so awesome that he gets to be part of it, too. Uh, I love watching, especially with him now on ESPN3. I love getting to see him play and uh, see him play against friends of mine, and he's suddenly a little more part of the community than he's gotten to be in a couple years, so it's really fun. You taught him everything he knows, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Other way around. Now, sure. you, you did spend a lot of time in the Bay Area, and I'm not going to ask you to compare the two, but, but w what makes the Bay Area special in the ultimate sense? Um, they just draw a ton of talent and have really high standards for their players. It's really cool to see everyone out there constantly bringing it. Um, even pick up Golti is incredibly high level. Not necessarily because the talent is innately higher out there, but I think uh, the standards are a little bit higher for what is expected, maybe. I don't know. Last thing, I'll put you on the spot. If you're the coach of the Madison Radicals, what do you tell the team at halftime to try to close this one out? <laughs> clear to the sideline, dang it. They're all clearing to the middle. No, I don't know. They're an amazing team. I don't think they need any strategy bits from me, but... It sounds like you got some good advice for him, though. <laughs> no. Uh, the crowd bumps him up just to let him get into the crowd a little bit, I would say. Smile at us, you know. Very cool. Well, Georgia, <laughs> thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Best of luck as you continue to play this summer and look Thank forward you. to getting to see you play next. Thank you so much. That's Georgia Bosher, 2009 Callahan Award winner and a season ticket holder. More importantly, here are the Madison Radicals. It's 11-5 at the half. Now we take you back to some of the best highlights of Week 9 in the AUDL.
crowd in front. And now a shot to the end zone. There's Justin Allen, and he makes the grab. Justin Allen will dish right into the end zone for Izzy Bryant. Izzy Bryant doesn't like the contact he has. He spikes the disc.
stays with the disc and goes up and makes the shot. Some great plays last week in the Bay Area. Some pretty good plays tonight as well here in Madison. The Radicals lead the wind chill 11-5 as we get set for the start of the third quarter. Evan Lepler joined by Chuck Kindred. He can throw almost as well as Georgia Bosher can. That's true. Uh, your thoughts on the first half and, uh, and what does Minnesota have to do? Do they have a chance to get back in this? It's not looking good if you're Minnesota. they got to start scoring consistently. I think they have to abandon these over-the-tops and these long shots. I talked to a couple of the guys that play on Madison, and they said you got to keep the disc below the wall. There's a low wall around the field. And these low shots that Tom Annan's throwing, that Andrew Brown are throwing, they're very consistent. But as soon as you get over shoulder height, you just don't know. Let's see what you mean by jumping into some of these second-quarter highlights. It was a one-score game at the end of one, but Minnesota mistakes comp uh, compounded – by other mistakes, and then Madison with upline shots like this. They got a little lucky sometimes, too, but Swain had multiple scores and really just a dominant performance. Yeah, it's true. They looked pretty comfortable. When they did throw the higher stuff, they gave themselves more of a margin. You know, here you can see if the disc doesn't turn over, you got Riggles, who's 6'7". If it does turn over, then he can take a few steps back and clap catch it. And here's Tom Annan, a guy that just seems to be impervious to the wind. Always has a nice inside-out shape to his throw. In other words, the edge of the disc is down and away from the body. And that really allows it to fly upwind well. Here you can see Riggles thrown into a poached D there. And this is the nice throw and go by Wiseman. Coolidge waits a little bit of a while. Now watch Wiseman just keep his defender on his back and use that height. He's so big. Second half underway. The wind chill on the pull. And it barely stayed in bounds. In fact, it didn't stay in bounds. The Radicals will center. The wind chill need to break here. They're looking at a five-man horizontal stack downfield, one reset behind the disc. Schleicher immediately cuts to the break side, reset to Annan. What do you think of the five-man host stack? It's almost impossible in a normal-sized club field, but this is a 50-yard wide field, 53 and a half, I believe. So five guys, no problem. A lot more space. And it's proportional. You think about the 40 yards wide. You got four guys across typically. It was the inbounds. What a great job tiptoeing the sidelines by David Schleicher. Schleicher seventh in the league in goals scored entering action today. And Schleicher's hurt. I think he got a Charlie horse on his right quad, looks like. He can't run. Two radicals nearby, and it's an easy... First point offensive conversion for Madison. Dave Wiseman hauls in the score. Yeah, great adjustment there in the air by Schleicher. You could see exactly what we're talking about. The throw starts low. As soon as it gets above the wall, then you just have no idea. It bounces up. It's up and down. Very hard to read. Schleicher does a great job to adjust and keep possession. And we've been saying it all night, when you reverse the field, it's really a problem on a field this wide, especially against some of these front-loaded, junky defenses. So the Radical fans delighted with this touchdown lead here at Bree Stevens Field. It was fun having Georgia Bosher up here. You've known her for a while. What impresses you most about her as a player? Just everything. <laughs> That's great, all? Great defense, huge bids, gigantic hucks, great low breaks. She's just a natural athlete. I played against her in Chicago when I think, I think I had just finished college and she was a teenager in high school. And she got a run through layout D in a game of pickup that my jaw hit the floor. I said, who is that? She won three USA Ultimate Women's titles with Fury and then the World Club Championship in 2010 as well. Last night was a big night for Women's Ultimate in the Bay Area, the first ever Bay Area Women's All-Star game. Told about 250 people attended. The South All-Stars beat the North 27-20. Kayla Jurgensen from Fury and Santa Carnahan from American Barbecue were named the MVPs. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. There's so much talent. Talk about a deep pool of talent. Women's Ultimate in the Bay Area has been the cream of the crop for a decade. One of those things where the, the semifinals at sectionals could also be the semifinals at nationals. It's really true. Even in the co-ed division, I think, I think the co-ed section 
is normally wow great D there by Haran looks like he might have landed on that shoulder Haran and Graffi a tremendous matchup and Haran shaking up Graffi helps him up let's take a look Casual cross field throw. Watch Haran coming off the backside, lays out and makes sure of it. That's a great play. Haran is going to stay in the game. He's a big fella. Nice bid by Pettit Scantling. Eric Johnson sends one deep. Too far looking for Pat Jensen. I don't know about that. That looked perfect. Jensen's got to haul that one in. I know it's a tough catch, but this is a big game. You're down seven. We got no time to waste. I would have liked to have seen him left his feet. Back in April, Minnesota beat Madison to hand the Radicals their first loss. Madison's second loss was on Memorial Day weekend against Chicago, a loss that they quickly avenged the very next day. Yeah, that was the first time I saw a team run out the clock. Chicago spent the last 90 seconds of the game just resetting over and over again until there was no time left. Like the four corners offense. Yeah, I did not think it would work, but it worked beautifully. Meshnik rips a bomb deep. Graffy's there. Haran's closing. Peter Graffy all alone. Haran could not catch up. And a brilliant deep shot for the Radicals. Karan looks tired. I don't know if he's banged up, maybe from that layup, from that layout rather, but definitely was not moving at full speed there. And, you know, the extra width of the field, the extra length of the field, you're dealing with 80, 80 by 53. That is a gigantic space to cover, especially if you're a big guy. You can see here Haran basically mailing it in. I don't know if he could have gotten it, but we'll never know. So Graffy, always hungry for the disc, always looking to score, and always looking to get big Ds. He's been just a huge pickup this year. Braun will come off the field for this offensive point as Madison has scored, scored the, the first, first two here in the third quarter. Klain, the center handler, up ahead for Ben Feldman. So Graffy playing center field here. And just intimidating guys like Schoenrock and Yacht from exploring the deep space. They're basically standing in the middle of the field with nothing to do. Shirley nice. threads the needle for Yacht. Looking deep. Yacht with just enough float finding Schoenrock in the end zone. Yeah, that's really what they need to do. They need to get it to that mid-tier downfield threat. A guy like Yacht or Schoenrock who have space, but that cup is so effective. That it forces you either to just rifle it through the middle or throw something over the top, which they haven't had a lot of success with. Ben Yacht, a rookie in the AUDL this year. Coach Lou Abramowski only knew about him because he played sectionals with him a few years ago in a, a random sort of mismatch of players. So this guy's going to be really good in the AUDL with his size and, and speed and ranginess. Yeah, hashtag Yacht Club. He's got a huge following. Lots of the local Minnesota guys and gals love the way he plays, rightly so. Here's a deep shot looking for Coolidge. Rising up and pulling it down. Showtime here in Madison. And an injury called as the Minnesota defender. I think that's Mattis holding the left wrist. Well, Mattis challenged. And hopefully he's all right. Unfortunately, he just got posterized. Hopefully he just jammed it. I can't see. He's not moving it at all. I, I assume that was on the landing. Holding his left wrist, the athletic trainer will take a look. Madison on the reset. Coolidge 
to the doorstep and into the end zone. Wiseman to Shrywise. It's all Rads right now. It is. They're two to one right now. It has been not the contest we thought it might be. Here we can see that play. Mattis goes down. Yeah, you see he puts his left hand down to catch himself, and I think he just jammed his wrist. When I looked at him walking off the field, did not look broken. I think it's it might be sprained. He came down real hard with a lot of weight on that on that left wrist. Also saw James Ron nursing that shoulder. He was kind of moving it awkwardly. So Minnesota down big, and, and they look like they might be getting a little beat up out there. Minnesota, after this game, has three contests left, including that game against Indianapolis that will be rescheduled. That's not an easy game. They also have a game against the Wildfire left. Madison has a game against Chicago next week. Underneath Hemish at midfield. Triple team for a one count. Now releases for Johnson. Graffy doing a great job on Haran downfield. Not giving him a lot of space. Making sure to challenge that deep look. Swain lays out right into the back of Madison's Pat Jensen, uh, Minneapolis' Pat Jensen. That's one of the, I mean, that's not an intentional foul, but that's got to be called a foul. I mean, he clearly dove right into his back. Absolutely. That's no question. Uh, he should get 10 yards. And I don't think that 10 yard penalty is a disincentive for him to start do for, for him to stop doing that, but. You know, no, the rules are the rules. Yeah, agreed. And, and Swain's got to find a way. See the shot to the end zone here from EJ. Swain's got to find a way to make a bid around his receiver. I mean, basically, if you if you just pursue, 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 and then dive, you're going to be crawling up a guy's back. You can land on their legs. You can tear ACLs that way. You can do all kinds of damage. He's got to make a choice to go left or right and stick with it. Otherwise, it's a dangerous play. So I think it is on Swain, and I think it should be a foul. Well, it's a 2-1. to one. Scoring advantage right now for the Radicals, 14-7 on the scoreboard. As Hemish hauls in that one. Yeah, good job by Hemish on that point to be loud about his poaches. I think Brian Hart was guarding him, and he was really kind of sagging off into the lane, trying to poach a lot, playing some lazy D, and Hemish burned him a couple times. Well, the story of tonight's game is really the Madison defense. We're nearly through two and a half quarters, only seven scores for Minneapolis. The Radicals are only allowing 15.3 scores per game for the year. And in each of the last five games, Chuck, they've held their opponent to 15 or fewer. And when you think about the pace of this league, it's pretty remarkable that they've been able to do that so consistently. That's, that's really true. You see the link there for altianalytics.com if you want to get into the stats a little more. You know, you've only got seven seconds to throw. There's not a lot of breaks. You know, there's a lot of scoring in this league by design. What do you think of this play? The five-person horizontal scut. Four guys went deep, and the far side guy, in this instance, it was Dave Wiseman, just made a 50-yard horizontal cut across the field. He was wide open. Yeah, it's a great play. Worked to a tee. Nice defense by Drescher. Stepped on Andrew Brown. Stall count was rising, though, and he throws it away. Great nice job. Layout. Yeah, layout D by Schoenrock. Absolutely. That's what they need a little more of. Schoenrock, very athletic guy. You can see him here going downfield. Now he lets a flick fly. Looking to Yacht in the end zone. Ben Yacht with the best score of the day for the wind chill thus far. Yeah, great job. They really need strings. Schoenrock to just, just haul out and have himself a game. They need some scoring. They need some explosion. And Ben Yacht in the air. Nothing better. And they need to have some fun. I mean, Minnesota has been pretty flat. Madison threw that first punch. Minnesota needs to bring some swagger here if they're going to have any chance of making this close. This is Brian Schoenrock's point. He got the D. Got the up line throw. Going up over his defender Schleicher and then just allowed Yacht the chance to make the play. Scott Riggles not big enough that time. Yeah, you're really right about just having some fun out there. I mean, they're losing. So... If things go, I mean, basically, whatever they do, the chances are very good they're going to lose. So 
Go out there and play Frisbee, you know? What's the worst that could happen? You could win the game. Yeah, man, Minnesota probably feels it should be better than its 5-5 five and five record. They had a five-score lead against Indianapolis that they blew. Lost a couple nail-biters to Indy. And consequently, it looks like Indy's probably going to edge them out for that three spot, barring anything really surprising over the next month. Yeah, that's really incredible, and it's a testament to Indianapolis. Those guys play so hard. They're always hungry. They're always getting after it, and they pull off big wins against big opponents constantly. Cameron Brock, leading scorer in the league. Nice article about him in the Indianapolis Main newspaper this past week. This one unleashed, looking for Meshnik. Perfectly put. What a chuck from Kelson Alexander. Yeah, that was beautiful. Great job by Meshnik to set that up and then release deep so that there's really nothing the defender could do. Easy clap catch. But you know what? Minnesota tried something there. They bothered the reset. Here we see the huck deep. Plenty of pace on this. Great shape. Really wasn't that open, but the throw was so on the money. But Minnesota played kind of a no-dump defense there, really bothered the reset. Madison was able to get an upline cut and throw a little tight iota to set up that huck. But I like that look for Minnesota. That really caused some trouble for Madison. It's hard to believe that Kelson Alexander can be that precise with his throws. He really only started playing ultimate in college, 24 years old now. But he was a nationally recognized climber when he was younger at the U.S. Youth National Climbing Championship, he ranked fifth. Wow, that's incredible. That's elite. I would imagine that would help your throws too because you need to have incredible strength in your wrist to climb. And really the only thing you can do to work on your flick is your forearm and wrist stuff. Maybe that's why he can flick like that. The hammer over the top hauled in by Lean. This is Meeson. Casually flip back to Lean, and the handler's working patiently here in the hands of Carr. And watch how Meshnik and Weber don't overreact here. They're really trying to just steer the disc towards the sideline. Great job by Minnesota to not let them. But you can see as a cup, you really don't want to be too reactive. You want to shape the path of the disc a little bit. And you can see them sort of funneling it towards the sideline. That's where they want the disc. That's where the throw's a little harder. Lefty Scuber barely kept alive by Meeson. And there, Meeson does the right thing. Immediately steps around the mark, opens up the field. About a 45-yard swing. Johnson double team. The lefty Scuber from Eric Johnson. So Madison getting what they want here, a lot of touches, a lot of throws, and some of them high risk. You can see right there, Meshnik puts his foot right near the release. But so far, Minnesota up to the task. And into the end zone, the goal will go to Pete Carr. Madison really made the wind chill earn it, though. Yeah, as, as a defense, that's what you want. You want a lot of throws. You want a couple risky ones over the top or around. If they score, they score. You're on defense, so you're at a disadvantage. But look at this. This is nearly a turn. And Carr was, you know, about 10 years ago, if he did that in the end zone, he would have to complete another throw. There was a time when you could set a pivot foot in the end zone, not realize you were in, and the goal would not count. That was a, a rule that... You know, only came into a, uh, occurrence a few times, but smart to change it. Absolutely agree. Hashtag AUDL rules. If you have any ideas for rules for next year in the AUDL, we've had a couple people on Twitter throwing in some suggestions. What do you think of the Twitterverse? Are they on their game tonight? You know, they're pretty strong. They're showing up like the Radicals tonight. Joshua Langenthal says, puller throws from the brick line as opposed to the end zone. That might be a good idea with such a big field. I think hammers from the 50-yard line should be two points. Riggles looking deep. Schleicher 
is there. Wow, absorbed some contact there too. Physical play, Schleicher a little, a little aggravated and rightly so, but a nice catch. Schleicher the score and one. And you see there, even after he gets roughed up a little, physical play, a lot of competition, makes the catch. You know what, he's over there, he's giving the guy a little tap on the shoulder saying, hey, nice try. That's one of the things about Ultimate that I think is just so unique. The guys, there's so much respect for each other, for the sport, for new guys coming out. You know, you, you play pickup and a new guy's in town, comes out to the pickup game. And, you know, I've done that a bunch of times and I always feel welcome. I always feel like people want me to learn how to play. They want me to be a part of it. And if you go play pickup basketball, pickup volleyball, any other sport, it just doesn't happen as often. A lot of times they look at you like, who's this guy? We don't, actually, we're all set. We got plenty of guys tonight. And it's hard to break in. I love that about Ultimate. Three and a half to play here in the third quarter. 16-9, Madison. Mason, lefty backhands it forward. Jensen back to the handler. Mason, the flick this time, hitting lean. Now Johnson in the middle. Minnesota going the wrong way right now. Of course, a good team is never afraid to go the wrong way. But a stall count signaled, and this was going to get eaten up by the Madison defense anyway. Yeah, Meeson's been making some really nice throws under pressure. Held that one a little too long. Looked like he had a reset at stall six that he looked off. So great D continues for Madison. Couldn't even reset the disc, let alone get it moving downfield. Underneath Everhart. One of the primary handlers for Madison's D-line. Now Everhart broke deep. Shot there and perfectly done. That's Everhart a, made that cut from the handler spot and shocked the windshield. Yeah, that's the Bo Kittridge cut. Stand behind the disc, make a quick reset, and then sprint to the end zone. And a great throw by, I think that was Drews. Beautiful shape, dropped it right in there. Watch him take off right after he releases his first throw. And he makes this cut quick. Stall one, stall two, stall three, and he's gone. Yeah, and look at this throw. Just perfect, drops it right in there. It's almost like a hammer it comes up and goes down so quickly. Radicals lead by eight. An update from the East Division, the first meeting of the season between two of the top teams in the East, the D.C. Breeze and the New York Empire. They'll play four times over the next month before any possible postseason matchup. And New York with just one loss, D.C. with two, so the Empire came into the game in second place, but right now D.C. has a six-score lead, 30-24 to 24 in the fourth quarter. So it looks like D.C., at least for tonight, is the better team and is going to move into second place in the East. Good for them. They're an expansion team, first season. Got Alexander Dutchy Gesquier at the helm. Sorry, second season, my mistake. And a freshly revamped roster, that's a big win for them. It feels like an expansion team with the relevant talent that they acquired. The Pittsburgh guys, Brett Matsuka, and, and most importantly, your former coach and teammate with Revolver, Alex Gesquier. Yeah, big acquisitions there. Brett Matsuka and Tyler DiGirolamo are just, those are all world players at this point. It's pretty fun to have those guys playing in front of the home crowd. So Minnesota back within seven. It was 11-5 at the half. Madison's outscoring Minnesota 6-5 here in the third in the highest scoring quarter of the game by far. Yeah, things have loosened up. You know what I think it is probably more than anything is just this wind has died down. It's a little later, not as much of a swirling wind, and we're seeing more completions than turnovers. In the first half, how many times did we see throws go up that looked good? And then all of a sudden, the air pops it up. It turns over a little too quick, and it's a turnover. Just nine points in the 12-minute first quarter. Just seven points combined in the 12-minute second quarter. The windshield couldn't get out of their own way, but things have opened up offensively for both teams here in the third. Big layout by Ben Yach. Full extension, and he is a big man. That's what they really need. They need to break. And Ben Yach stepping up, making a big play for him. 
Great D by Thibodeau on that upline cut. Jensen has two dumps there. He finds Drescher. Feldman, stall count rising, wraps the swing around the defender, lost about 15 yards, but got it to Drescher. And now right back to Feldman, stall count reset. He looked off, yacht underneath. Timeout call. Lou Abramowski's head is in his hands right now. I think probably wanted the throw to, to Ben Yacht, who was open on the open side there instead of the timeout. Look at this great run through layout D by Yacht. Pass intended for Coolidge. Yacht with a full extension D. Minnesota has the disc late third quarter trying to make this a good game as we take the turn for home. We're back to Madison in a moment. I missed my graduation to practice. I sleep so we could drill. I missed anniversary of Father's Day. Mother's Day. As you can see, the Radicals leading by seven. And it's a long climb up the ladder for Minnesota to try to get back in this, but it starts here. Looking for a break to perhaps end this third quarter the right way. Coach Lou Abramowski who was a, a racquetball player in college primarily before he found Ultimate. He said that racket sports, in his opinion, are the best for cross training and Usually tennis players or racquetball players can be pretty good ultimate players. The throwing motion is, is very similar to the forehand or the backhand of either a racquetball racket or a tennis racket. Yeah, Andrew Brown, pretty competitive tennis player, coached in, uh, I believe, Whitefish Bay, which is just a northern suburb of Milwaukee. So that was his first sport. Seems to have worked. To the end zone, over the reach of a stretched out Pat Jensen. Brian Hart, number 13, sneakily kind of gets in the way of the uh, receiver. And Madison does a lot of really good things from a positioning standpoint defensively. This Hawk brought down the whistle blue, and timeout was called by Madison before that throw. So the great catch downfield made by Kevin Pettit Scantling will be wiped out, and Madison will have the disc, and we'll take another timeout. The clock winding down. Yeah, it's here. a Zipcar. I don't own it. I just use it when I need it. But Zipcar has thousands of cars parked all over the city, even two on my block. You can use one for an hour or for a day. And Zipcar pays for gas and insurance. It's back. easy. Go to Zipcar.com to get your Zipcar, the key to vehicles parked in your neighborhood and across the globe. For work or play, find a Zipcar near you, book it. And before you know it, you're on the road. Cars by the hour or day. Gas and insurance included. Join for as little as $6 per month at Zipcar.com. 14 seconds left here in the third quarter. The scoreboard clock updated. And Madison will have the disc. By the way, next weekend we will be north of the border again. Maybe we'll see Toronto finally lose. I doubt it. The Rush won again tonight, taking down Montreal 31 to 18. So the Rush still undefeated. Next week they host the New York Empire at six o'clock. And it's looking like they're gonna face a New York team that's gonna be trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses because New York having trouble in DC tonight. Yeah, Toronto really has a great program. They just have so much momentum right now. 31-18 is just a, a slaughter. They're really taking care of business tonight against the Montreal Royale at Percival Molson Stadium. The Rush are now 9-0 this year. The only undefeated team in the league. San Jose has one loss. This Madison team has lost twice. Eight seconds for the Radicals. Wraps it around the double team. Three seconds in the half. Pushing violation called with a second and a half left and they'll add eight and a half seconds to the clock. 10 seconds left and delay of game. 
and they'll back him up 10 yards. Apparently Thibodeau took too long before he threw it. Interesting. There's still some confusion in these end of quarter situations. So the delay of game was that he didn't tap it in quick enough? Didn't look like he took very long. 10 seconds on the clock. And it starts on the whistle. And there's a turnover. So Horan back in the game. Timeout called by the wind chill. This is turning into an NBA game. They, you know, they always say the final two minutes last 45 minutes. Last yeah. minute of the third quarter. It's taken a while here in Madison. Yeah, you know, I, I think one of the players on the sidelines said call timeout or something. The ref heard it. And I'm not sure he was actually calling a timeout, but in any event, a rule's a rule. He said timeout. And now they're throwing everybody back on the field. Yeah, very confusing. Maybe you mentioned earlier, maybe no, no timeout should be allowed to be called from the sideline. You might be right about that. Seems like it causes some problems. Ron flips it in. Four seconds. Down to three. Ron takes a blady flick shot to the end zone. Deed up once, but caught! Minnesota ends the quarter with a score as Ben Yacht hauls it in off the deflection. And that brings the wind chill within six as we take the turn for home. Pretty nifty play here. Gets a little give and go back to Haran, and he throws a blade, which is very hard to do. It's very hard to catch. You can see Shriwai was definitely trying to catch that, and it just rolls right off the glove there. Shriwai could not believe he let that one slip through. We've got 12 minutes left. Three down, one to go. The Radicals looking to hang on at home. 17-11, Madison. I missed my graduation. To practice. Asleep so we could drill. I missed anniversary of Father's Day. Mother's Day. Welcome back to Madison. We'll have the highlights in a moment, but first, check what's that? This is the Snoopy Dog Dive Through a Hoop Race. Pretty standard. All right. You can see these are semi-pro Snoopy. Runners. I hear. I hear. If you buy two of those costumes, you get the third one free. So I'm curious where the third participant is. Yeah, he's running late. Flight was delayed. He should be here. Right now, they're running around. Uh, those are plastic bats. I guess we're going to watch some highlights, although that was kind of fun to watch, too. That was my highlight. This third quarter, both teams scored six times. There were many more goals in the third quarter than there were in the first or the second. That was a great D by James Ron. He got banged up. He did return. Wow. Ridiculous guy over the top there from Thomas Coolidge. Yeah, so on the fun. reverse angle. Great play by him to get up and absorb contact. Cool, it's listed at just 5'8", but he really rose above. That was a defensive play by Schoenrock. Here's that deep shot, I believe, to Meshnik. Just too good, so much, so much pace on that flick. Here's one of those upside down scubers, well played by Danny Meeson. And big layout D from Yacht, that ignited the, the wind chill. They get a little bit closer back into the game. And here's that last play of the half. Tough break for Schweiwise. Blade to the end zone, bounces off the defender's hand, and Yacht is there for the goal. You can see Schweiwise furious with himself. If Schweiwise doesn't touch that, it's a really tough catch for Yacht. Schweiwise right. basically served it up on a silver platter. Yeah, and you know, he knew that that was the one thing that could happen that, that could go wrong there. He's a smart guy. He knows exactly which way he's spinning. You saw him try to get the fat part of his hand on the front of the disc, but it just bounced off. If we can, let's take a look at the Midwest division standings to see exactly where Madison and Minnesota stack up. Of course, Madison won Minnesota currently in fourth with Chicago and Indy in that 2-3 spot. Now, Chicago and Madison will play again next week, so that basically could be a big game to determine the division regular season winner. The big question, I think, 
does Indianapolis have enough to hold off Minnesota? And the Alley Cats are big Radicals fans right now. Yeah, rightly so. This is a pretty tight division. Four teams that are all very, very talented right in the hunt. I mean, the idea that, that Minnesota wouldn't be good enough to even be in the playoffs when you look at their roster is shocking in a way. Cincinnati's had a couple nice wins as well. Detroit is having a tough season. The Radicals, the class of the division. Let's take a look eastward. Next week, we'll see Toronto and New York. The Empire were in second place before the D.C. Breeze took care of business tonight in our nation's capital. An impressive win for D.C. I think, you know, New York, after the way they took care of business against Montreal, coming from behind last week, the Empire getting big performances from Matt Bode and Justin Allen, the Appalachian State product who's been so good, made so many highlight reel plays last week, but... Apparently, D.C. made more plays tonight. Yeah, Justin Allen is really showing up this year. He's got just some some great highlight reels to look at, and that's going to be an interesting division to watch as well. I think on the west side, Vancouver threatening to close the gap, but really there's kind of two. It's almost a two-horse race, San Jose and San Francisco. And remember, since the west is an expansion division, they don't get that third kind of wild card avenue. So Vancouver might be out. San Jose has taken two out of the three meetings from San Francisco. They do meet one more time in the regular season, and that is on the 12th of July, right before the playoffs. So they could play on July 12th and then play in basically a quarterfinal matchup a week later for the right to make it to championship weekend, July 26th and 27th in Toronto. If you've never been to Toronto before, and you want to see an amazing ultimate experience, plan your trip now. That's going to be a historic weekend as Toronto's going to face the teams from the, the West for the first time. Madison's going to have something to say about it. You know, I think you know, Toronto's the undefeated team. The San Jose Spiders, sort of the talk of the league. The Bay Area has so much respect. How do you feel this Madison team stacks up with Toronto and with those Bay Area Giants? I think they're a cut below, unfortunately. They've got the potential to pull an upset, but it will truly be an upset. I think Toronto is just kind of the alpha, and then you see these these top-tier talents like Kurt Gibson and Bo Kittredge walking in. What was the difference in the championship game last year? I mean, it was a close game, but Toronto prevailed. Yeah, Toronto had no problem with the zone, which was surprising, really. Deep shot for Minnesota, and hauled in by James Ron. Yeah, nice catch there by Hron. Yeah, last year in the final, Toronto really just came out just better than I think we'd seen them all year. They took it up a level for the final. Mark Lloyd played out of his mind, and they had no problem at all beating that front-heavy zone. They were hitting it over the top. They were hucking it against it. They just, they just looked like men playing boys. I was surprised at how good they were. And you know what else is they've got great size. They've got a lot of guys, probably, probably seven or eight guys on the roster over 6'1". And that, that certainly helps when you're going to try to beat a zone. I think they only have like three or four guys who are below six feet. Yeah, they grow them different up in Canada. The Nats are out right now. If you've never played in the Midwest, as the sun sets in the summertime, you get a lot of mosquitoes and a lot of gnats. Well, it's as close as it's been in a while. Five-score game. Yeah, if Minnesota breaks here, then the pressure is really on Madison. Nice pressure. Shrywise hauls it in. Nice cut from Coolidge. He is so quick. Back to Andrew Brown. Bluffs the backhand deep shot. Zips a forehand to Shrywise. Shrywise thinking deep, looking for Riggles. Got him. That is just an elite throw. Very tight angle. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of room there. There was a defender creeping in from the weak side. He had to put some velocity on it. Oh, he just he dialed it up and just delivered. You know, a lot of guys, when they see Riggles going deep, would just err on the side of throwing it high. But watch Shrywise get the disc underneath against a bid. You see former tennis standout Andrew Brown. Nice bid there. I like the pressure from Miller. But watch this throw. There's really not a lot to look at. And he just drops a dime. Help off the backside. Defender in front. I mean, that's, that's kind of the setup you want if you're the defensive team. But it just doesn't work. That's too good. Going back to the cross-division comparisons, 
What would Madison need to show you to make you think that they can beat a Toronto or a San Jose or a San Fran? Wow, that's a good question. I, I think they need a little more athletic receivers downfield. I'd need to see Riggles just just sky more. I think he's generally winning with his legs, but they're going to need him to go up over big-time defenders, and I'm not sure he can do that consistently. Up line, that's an efficient offensive point for the wind chill. Jensen in the end zone for the score. Yeah, nice job by Minnesota. I, I think Madison really has all the tools they need. I'm just not sure they're at the level, to be honest. They would need to be able to win some 50-50 balls against elite, you know, big downfield defenders, guys like Bo Kitchers, guys like Kurt Gibson, you know, Nick Sloven coming off the backside, some of those Vancouver guys. Toronto's got just a ton of guys that can punish you in the air. And I don't think they're athletic enough. With all that said, their defense has been the best in the league, at least statistically, through the course of this season. And it's a different defense. Not a lot of teams are running the 2-4-1 zone that Madison is. So it's something you have to prepare for and be ready for. Otherwise, it'll flummox you. And a lot of it could depend on the conditions in Toronto the weekend of July 26th and 27th. That's a really good point, Evan. If it's windy, that could certainly help Madison. And you know what else? We saw Madison play Chicago. Chicago's got one of the premier deep receivers in the game, A.J. Nelson. A.J. may as well have stayed home that weekend when we had the doubleheader. He did nothing. Their zone totally neutralized him. There were no good looks at him. So if they can do that kind of a defense and neutralize a guy like Bo downfield, make him a handler, who's to say they can't win? Riggles to Shrywise. They've been a dangerous duo tonight. Thibodeau. Reverses. Shrywise again wide open. Drescher is down on the field. It's like an equipment timeout. That's the second time he's had a problem with that cleat. I think it popped off when he was guarding Andrew Brown before. Might have blown out his cleat or something. It's really a bad feeling. It happens to everybody, though. You're playing on that old pair of cleats and making that cut, and your foot just slides out of the cleat as you try to reverse directions. Yeah, it looks like maybe he's all right here. What's the longest you've played in a pair of busted cleats? I played the entire 2008 Nationals and blown out cleats. Duct tape all the way around both of them. I Well, they, I mean, it's not broke. It just needs a little duct tape. Yeah, right. It's the American way. I couldn't tell you why I played with those cleats, by the way. That's embarrassing in retrospect. Under 10 minutes to go. Great speed to haul that one in. Coolidge has been so shifty tonight for the Radicals. Annan left-handed. For the score to Coolidge. That's some pretty offense in Coolidge. How fast is Coolidge? I feel like every time I see him, he's a step faster than last time. His coach says he just never stops sprinting. It's really true. He has to stop when he has the disc, but as soon as he releases, fakes one way. Look at the way he switches hands here. That throw has become so prominent in the elite game just over the past five, six years. Ten years ago, you hardly ever saw a right-handed thrower with that lefty release. And yeah. now it's a common thing. Everybody throws it. You see there, Coolidge, for most people, that's a full extension layout. Coolidge clap catches that disc. What a freakish athlete. Yeah, it's to the point now where a lot of guys, instead of throwing open side flicks, will throw lefty backhands almost exclusively. Speaking of off-handed stuff, look at that. Scuba over the top from EJ. Madison has largely kept Johnson quiet tonight. Yeah, they have. This is Jensen. And to the brink of the end zone for Carr. Sideline calling for a triple team call there, rightly so. Lean Scubers to Hemish for the score. Wow, nice offense for Minnesota. That defense looked pretty good. But Minnesota sliced it right up the middle, never let the defense settle back in. Lots over the tops, quick movement. You know, the less time you spend holding the disc, the harder it is for any defense, man or otherwise, to really settle in. And Minnesota demonstrates that beautifully on that point. The 
The wind has clearly died down. That scuba becomes a little more risky if it's windy, but with no wind for a thrower like Austin Lee, and pretty simple. Yeah, it's true. Throw that in the first half, and there's no telling. Just over nine minutes to go. One of the questions now is, can Madison keep their streak of holding the opponent to 15 or fewer goals? It's been five straight games that they've done it, but Minnesota has a lot of time left and a pretty off, pretty good offense that's clicking right now. Yeah, it is. You're right. There's still very good defensive pressure, but for whatever reason, Minnesota's just punching it in now. Nice bit underneath by EJ. Wiseman with the disc working. Oh, and a careless drop by Andrew Brown there. Minnesota's going to pick up the disc in the red zone with an opportunity to pull within four. Be the closest it's been since really the second quarter. In the middle of the field, Mike Peterson was fouled. He'll center it on the goal line. Scuba to space, wide open. Minnesota making a run. I like that play from Peterson just to get the disc to, this, to the goal line, tap it in, throw the scuba. Don't let the defense settle in. Don't let them take a look around and see that, oh, there's a guy in the back corner wide open. It's going to be interesting here. The entire offensive line for Madison coming to the sideline. The D-line, for the most part, is onto the field. And the D-line is going to be receiving here. That's a good point. You know, it might be different if it was a one-score game instead of now a four-score game. Madison keeps the zone near the end zone. and Look at number 30 here. All alone. Nobody sees him. Except Mark, for Peterson. Mark Pizanski, 27-year-old out of St. Olaf College in Minnesota. So this is getting interesting. Plenty of time right now. Eight and a half minutes, four-point lead. And Minnesota is picking up. Madison is slowing down a little bit. Deep shot is up. Peterson off the backside. Everhart there for Madison, but he's knocked it away. The wind chill with two defenders in the vicinity. And Lou Abramowski and the windchill getting fired up on the sideline. Yeah, the energy level is very different right now for Minnesota. Both the defenders beat the offensive player to the disc there. Let's see what they can do. Drescher doing some cutting underneath, couldn't find him. Here's a big deep shot. Swain there defensively, couldn't get it, looked like a foul. Referees don't blow the whistle. Schoenrock waved his hands, he said no foul. So it did look like a little contact on the arm. I'd love to see a replay. Yeah, it looked like Swain just hacked him. Let's take a look here. It may be at, Let's see what happened, yeah. I think he had a touch. He's saying, you know what? I had first touch. Back to live action. Brian Hart racing deep. Madison back on the board. Wow, and what a bid. Drescher goes full horizontal, made a nice play. I didn't even think he would get close, and he almost did that. Brian Hart's so casual to look at him, just... Jogs in, does a little clap catch in the bread basket. I'm surprised he didn't get burned on that one. He became the leader of the Hodags as a senior here in Madison. Now a dental student at Marquette. And how close was Drescher? Look at that bid right over the shoulder. Yeah, Brian Hart might be a little gassed from a 12-hour shift doing his residency in dental school. But look at that bid. Beautiful. And he does the right thing there. He picks a side and goes all, all in to the right side, off the right shoulder. Nice bid. Minnesota had scored four of the first six points here in the fourth. Broken up by the deep shot for Hart. Nice pressure there by number five. Inside wow. out flick, but too high over Austin Lean. And Madison does what it always does. It relies on its defense to get them back into a point, back into a game. They are they just turn it on anytime they need it. You can see that Tim DeBow really focuses on D because they they are just excellent on that side of the disc. Matt Weber gets it ahead for Meshnik. That one floated on him, and it's intercepted by Minnie. Wow, terrible throw from Meshnik. Haran had the D. 
You don't say that very often. Terrible throw by Meshnik. No, you don't. Meshnik does a lot of things right. But that one, I'm, I'm not sure what happened. Very loose. So the hammer's wide open right now. Wide open off the backside. Graffy's baiting it, perhaps. It would be about a 45, 50 yard shot. You got to hit him. Jensen is just wide open. Now they're collapsing a little bit. They're working it down the field even without Jensen, who was deep looking for the hammer. Madison drop back. Wow. Another defender and in the cup, it's Meshnik who makes up for his mistake. <laughs> yeah, Meshnik. Right on cue. Here's Weber deep. Weber. Almost. The bearded giant goes for it. A little too much. Nobody wants to score here, Evan. There's a hammer. Graffy defending. Haran can't get it. <laughs> Graffy wins the battle. That is a really tough D by Graffy. Going right over his head away from him. Against a really great high receiver in James Haran. Let's take a look at this replay. Big defensive play by Meshnik. Gets the layout D. And now watch it. Here's a replay of that DEJ saying I should have gone to it. Here's the hammer over the top. Watch Graffy go up and not foul. Locate the disc. It's going right over his head and it's upside down. So hard to read that disc well. Madison takes the timeout. The Radicals lead by five here in the fourth. Yeah, it's a zip car. I don't own it. I just use it when I need it. The zip car has thousands of cars parked all over the city. Even two on my block. You can use one for an hour or for a day. And zip car pays for gas and insurance. It's easy. Go to Zipcar.com to get your zip card, the key to vehicles parked in your neighborhood and across the globe. For work or play, find a zip car near you, book it. And before you know it, you're on the road. Cars by the hour or day, gas and insurance included. Join for as little as $6 per month at Zipcar.com. 5.21 to go, as you see. Evan Lepler alongside Chuck Kindred. Great to have you with us. As our AUDL game of the week brings us to Wisconsin. Thankfully, it brings us here in June and not January. They had a really tough winter here, yeah. although you know. Yeah. You made the drive from Milwaukee earlier today. I live an hour east of here. What bet did you lose that forced you to live in this part of the country where it's <laughs> cold all winter long? I don't know. I picked the wrong year, though. The coldest winter in 33 years. And that's when I moved from the West Coast to the Midwest. I attended, a, actually, a Frisbee Buddies wedding in Milwaukee in January. It was unseasonably warm in the mid-upper 20s. Yeah, beautiful weather. Mid-upper 20s. You can almost get out there in some shorts. Right through the hands of Tom Annan. Minnesota looking for the quick counter. Plain gets it over to Drescher. Deep shot, not wow. really to anybody. Looks like Trywise was making the cut. Trywise read that one beautifully. I'm not sure what happened there. I think that's a, sort of a frustration flick huck. Yeah. Nobody's open for me underneath. I'm just going to take a bomb, and that's a play that will cost you a win. Yeah, it will. That's almost one of those uh, captain of a college team kind of plays where you huck it to where you wish they were cutting. Yeah. Instructional hucking. We Been there. That. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great way to get on the bench. So we've seen a couple of really uncharacteristic drops from Tom Annan and Andrew Brown. Deep shot from Wiseman. Wow, terrible read. Terrible read. Lou Evermowski calls timeout, trying to stop this game of quad disc that is broken up <laughs> and try to restore the professional flavor. 20 to 15, Madison, the Radicals look like a 10 win team. They're three minutes and 50 seconds away here on ESPN3. I'm at my graduation to practice. Asleep so we could drill. I miss anniversary and Father's Day.
A really strong crowd has come out to watch the Radicals. You know, when Georgia Bosher, who won the Callahan Award and was on the World Game World Games team, when she's a season ticket holder, she's she's a trendsetter, I think, and clearly many have followed her lead. Yeah, you're right. It's been really cool to see her come back to Madison, really give a lot back to the community, bring up the level of women's ultimate here, playing for Heist. She is truly, I would say she's the best ultimate player here tonight, period. Not even close. And not to take anything away from the guys on the field. That is a bold statement. And you might be right. Madison displaying its depth all night long. Minnesota's made a run. It was a six-point deficit at the half, so right now Minnesota is winning the second half, but still a long uphill climb in these final three and a half minutes. And Carr sacrifices the yards to get the reset. Now Johnson. A lot of float on that hammer. Carr collects. Neeson, nearly a triple team. A lot of float, weak side. Defender comes in and rips it away. That's Seth Meyer. Wide open. Madison. Matt Weber, the goal. This Madison D is something else. They are just able to generate turns at will against really elite offensive squads. Pretty much having their way with everybody in the Midwest. When they have their four mids in the 2-4-1 cup, they allow the weak side mid to attack that floaty flick. And with such a wide field, he was able to close the gap there easily. And Seth Meyer, who Tim DeBile considers one of the best man defenders he's got doing work in the zone. Meyer, one of the few rookies on this Madison team. Great continuity from last year to this year, but you know that the key additions being Peter Graffy, obviously leading the league in D's, it's a pretty significant add. Seth Meyer as well, Adam Drews and Bill Everhart, also first year radicals that have made differences tonight. Yeah, it's really true. And a errant throw on the first first pass for Minnesota. Minnesota is coughing this one up. Underneath Drews, one of those rookies. Everhard another, and back to Drews. And that's gonna probably do it there. Tough point for Baker, Alex Baker, threw the first turnover and then got torched up line. Madison doing what they do, winning. Winning within their division. Time will tell if you're right about your belief that Toronto and San Jose, San Fran are a step above Madison. I'm, I'm not so sure. I think Madison, maybe along with Toronto, might be the deepest teams in the league. Really, the, you know, the 18th, 19th, 20th guys on their rosters can be difference makers. Although, you know, San Jose has been deeper than perhaps we initially thought at the start of the season. The way guys like Mark L. Bogan and Marcelo Sanchez, Simon Higgins have stepped up. They just added Devin Anderson, another guy from Revolver. So that's yeah. a nice addition. Yeah, they're trouble. Yeah, you know, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I if I put money on it, I would not I would not bet on Madison pulling an upset against any of those three teams in the playoffs. Johnson, well, that's something. <laughs> He's not afraid to keep throwing those blades, is he? We close in on two minutes left here in Madison. The Radicals led 5-4 after one, just dominated the second quarter to create the separation. It was 17-11 at the end of three. 5-4 Radicals. The score here in the fourth and just a careless drop there from a Pat Jensen. Yeah, you know, a lot of credit goes to Peter Graffy in the back. He really causes a lot of 
a lot of guys to not throw the deep shot. There's guys that are open, but Graffy's so athletic, generally in the right spot, and just intimidating a lot of those shots to the end zone that seem to be just begging to be thrown to. How tall is Graffy? He looks he looks pretty big out there. Listed at six foot two. And just an animal, an athlete. Yeah, he's he's trouble. Six two probably weighs what, a buck eighty? I mean he's he's trouble. He's a guy who's even bigger. Weber Whoa. perfect put. The two. Matt Weber at 6'6", 210, just slung it in and hit his bullseye right dead center. Yeah, two guys that spend a lot of time playing defense together in the cup. Weber dishing it to Meshnik in the end zone. Well, it helped that there wasn't really an aggressive mark here. Not much effort put into that one. And the easiest catch that Meshnik's made tonight. Yeah, great job by Madison to, to really just kind of put their foot down, close this one out against a team, Minnesota, that was surging here in the fourth quarter. It was a four-score game at 19-15. And the Radicals have rolled. Now the question is, will Minnesota get to 16, or will it be the sixth consecutive game that the Radicals have held their opponent to 15 or fewer? That's the suspense now. Good flow so far. It's a dangerous put to the back of the end zone. Out of bounds. Too far ahead for David Shirley in pursuit. Madison with 35 seconds to run off. Well, the Indianapolis Alley Cats are going to be happy. The wind chill is going to drop to five and six. Indy has the tiebreaker over Minnesota on the back of a couple very tight wins. Swain double teamed, and he was fouled before the throw. Contact call with 13 seconds left. Meanwhile, this Madison team will improve to 10 and 2. Next weekend, Madison and Chicago. That'll be the final meeting of the regular season between the Radicals and the Wildfire. One more deep shot for Minnesota. Schoen Rock in pursuit for the wind chill. The Madison defense finishes it. Peter Graffy ends it with an exclamation point tonight. And the first place Radicals prevail 23-15. This might as well have been a score for Graffy. The league leader in D's. Fantastic elevation from Graffy, the first year radical. So the final again, Madison 23 and Minnesota 15. Chuck Kindred down in the field with one of the victorious Radicals. I'm here down with uh, Andrew Meshnick of the Madison Radicals. Andrew, great game tonight against a tough opponent. You guys came out and really pulled away in the second half. How did you do it? I think our defense has really led the way all season. Uh, we, we make it try to make it tough every point for the offense. Whether it's our zone or our man, we just try to pressure the other team all over the field, try to make them turn it at some point. And what's it like playing in this 2-4-1 zone with with Weber, you guys up front just seem to be such a problem for the throwers on the other team. We like it a lot. It's a ton of fun out there. We know that we can make the other handlers feel really uncomfortable whenever we're swarming them all over the field. We can tell by the third and fourth quarter that they're really getting frustrated. So it's a lot of fun. We look forward to it every night. 
And how do you feel about the season so far? This is your second year with the team. You guys picked up uh, Peter Graffy and some other folks this year. How do you feel about the Madison Radicals in 2014? Yeah, we feel really good. We did we did make a few key additions uh, in the off season, and we've just been trying to improve every game each season. Looking forward to hopefully a chance at our playoffs and hopefully a weekend in Toronto. And who do you think maybe were the best players for Minnesota tonight? Anybody stand out to you? <laughs> I'd have to say EJ Eric Johnson. He made it really tough on our zone. He's just so good with the disc. Has all the throws. He can make it really difficult for us. So no matter what the wind conditions are, he's a great thrower. And who would, who would your MVP be from uh, the Madison Radicals tonight? I think you could see on that last play who it was. I'd have to go with number 26, Peter Graffy. It's hard to argue with that choice. Thanks a lot, Andrew Meshnick. Uh, good luck the rest of the season. I'm going to send it back up to Evan Lepler. Chuck, thank you so much. 23-15, the final. A real consistent performance from Madison tonight. The Radicals scored five in the first, six in the second, six in the third, and six in the fourth. That's consistency. So the Radicals take it 23-15, improving to 10-2 and two in the season. The wind chill drops to 5-6. and six. Next week, we will be in Toronto to see if the Rush will ever lose. The Toronto Rush are still undefeated, taking down Montreal today. Toronto hosting New York, a hungry empire team that also got knocked off today by D.C., changing the power of the guard a little bit in the east. Eastern Division showdown next Saturday, 6 o'clock Eastern time. Hope you'll join us then on ESPN3. But tonight, the Radicals were too good. The leaders in the Midwest prove why they're a first-place squad and likely headed to Toronto again for the AUDL Championship weekend. That's again July 26th and 27th in Toronto. For our entire Fulcrum Media Group team, for my broadcast partner Chuck Kindred, I'm Evan Lepler. Thanks so much for joining us tonight here in Madison. Good night.